I really like to start off chest day with a fly. It just sets everything up. You get a really good activation with a fly, whereas a press is a lot more primal. By its nature, you're involving the triceps and everything else. And yes, I love a good heavy press, but there's something to be said about putting your fly first, feel what you're trying to connect with, build that mind-muscle connection, and uh, really set you, set you up for a great workout. All right, what's up, heavy duty crew? We are back at the Acadiana Muscle. It is Saturday, October 5th, and we are here to train chest and shoulders today. Got my client and good friend, Bailey Boy. He's gonna be man in the can and getting a good workout in himself. Um, we're gonna follow pretty much the workouts we laid out on our last chest and shoulder session. So it's gonna start off with a press, a lateral raise movement, um, some flies for the chest, and a dip machine, which we have a few of here. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get warmed up and and we'll see you on the top set. All right, so yeah, obviously we're sitting in a different piece of equipment. Normally we're doing a barbell or rather a Smith machine high incline press for the shoulder, so a Smith machine shoulder press. However, I absolutely detest the Cybex machine that is here. And I was watching Hypertrophy Coach on uh, Instagram. Uh, shout out to you, bro. Great information on your channel. And he was overviewing Dorian Yates' shoulder press in the blood and guts videos. And it inspired me to go a little bit lower, a little bit lower than 90. 90 was my comfort zone. Um, oftentimes I would feel a lot of crackling and popping and, and things moving around. So I would just refrain from doing that. But today I wanna get a little bit deeper in the pocket. I wanna get a little bit more front delt active I like the path of this machine. So I've tried this one before with a neutral grip. The thing about the neutral grip is it's gonna tuck the elbow forward. When the elbow's tucked forward, it's a lot more stress on the rotator cuffs because of the way they wrap around the shoulder. So I'm digging in a lot more into that front delt and that rotator cuff there. So I don't wanna be in that position. Trying it in the past, maybe not like it as much. After watching homie's video, I had the thought when looking at this machine, let me check the bar path and see where it sits with a regular standard hand position. Well, the bar is almost behind my head. The activation of the side delt the rear delt and the front delt is actually really, really good on this machine. I'm going to start using it. We did our warm-up sets here and they felt fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and use more than I've ever used because I ought to be able to, right? I train perfect every time I come in. I only get stronger. So why shouldn't I be able to? And mind when you watch the video, you're going to see I'm going to go be going just a little bit below 90. Not too much. If I start feeling that kind of impingement or that funny stuff, I'm going to shut it down. And I think I'm going to disrobe because it's fucking hot already. Since we keep our movements so low in shoulders, and shoulders seem to be a rather high endurance muscle group, that's anecdotal, guys. I don't have some fucking data for that, but you use your shoulders in anything where you move your arm. So I'm gonna put a little bit extra intensity on the shoulders by doing a drop set. So I have my little pause while I yapped. I'm gonna lower the weight 30 to 50% and go ahead and hit it again. I really like this machine. I felt like I couldn't use my triceps at the end, you know? When you're pressing, you can finish your reps by really using your triceps, and I could not get them to catch where that was put behind my shoulders. So, I mean, definitely all in the shoulders there. Fantastic first exercise of the day. Glad I had those thoughts. Shout out to Hypertrophy Coach on Instagram. Thanks, bro. I was thinking I was just gonna walk over there and do the uh, cable lateral raises. Yeah, those are great, but what do we always talk about? Stability, stability, stability. And I forget that I'm in the best gym in Louisiana that has the best equipment. This machine got moved over here in the corner and I haven't paid attention to it in months, but it is here and we're gonna put it to work today. And just my warm up sets have my, my rear delts and my side delts are just engorged. My shoulders feel heavy on my arm. So I'm gonna absolutely give it hell with this set. So with a machine like this, the machine is slightly forward facing. It's really important to get in line with that. I was trying to do it a little bit more upright. It did not make my lateral delts feel any better. Actually, it was better fully leaning into the machine. I'm a bit of a thick boy. So I think for a bigger fella or a thicker fella, a more 
in-depth fellow like myself. These pads would need to be a little bit further out, but that's okay. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and hit a set with this. I'm also gonna probably drop set it depending on how I feel after. It would be a step in the right direction. Anything that makes your workout more intense makes it better. Within reason, too much is too much. I wanna get everything I can out of the very little volume that I put myself through. Oh, here we go. This damn machine was giving me drop sets the whole time. The plate keeps sticking to the stack. God only knows how much extra weight I was getting each one. I should have went heavier. I could max this thing out and use a gym pin on it, which is what's gonna happen in the future. So <sighs> I'm just gonna do a little rest pause. I'm not even gonna lower it, but I am gonna hit it again. Hit it some more. <sighs> yeah, full exhaustion right there. I'm done. I'm done. Whew. Okay, so here we are, first chest movement of the day. As I've talked about in the other videos, you know, I, on occasion, different training cycles, really like to start off chest day with a fly. It just sets everything up. You get a really good activation with a fly, whereas a press is a lot more primal. By its nature, you're involving the triceps and everything else, and yes, I love a good heavy press, but there's something to be said about putting your fly first, feel what you're trying to connect with, build that mind-muscle connection, and uh, really set you, set you up for a great workout. So it was also really nice to warm up with a fly as well. Again, you have all that direct contraction, that direct transfer of energy. When you're warming up, you're wanting to increase the internal temperature of the muscles, get them ready to perform, build the mental connection to them. All that was really good. The reason I chose this fly machine is it made me think after doing that really awesome set of side lateral raises on that machine, these two pieces of equipment have something in common and it's that you are moving, you are removing rather the fist to the elbow out of the equation. And what I mean by that is there's no bicep involvement. You're simply pushing or pulling through the elbows, which is a a lot more direct force there because there's a lot less stabilization involved and focus involved and perceived effort involved when you remove the shoulder to the fist. You're gonna do that. One thing Bailey and I were just talking about is when you're setting up to perform chest movements. Chest movements, a great cue guys to always be mindful of is elbows up, elbows out. Don't be tucking, right? So on this machine here, I need to make sure that my elbows stay in line with the machine. If I tuck them a little bit, where I tore this pec many, many years ago, I feel it pull very hard underneath my arm. If I would try to perform max effort in that way, it could definitely be potentially dangerous. Like it feels that way for certain. It was very uncomfortable and it made me think of stopping this machine until I made that adjustment. And Bailey, is, as a great student of mine, spoke about his experience arguing with people in the gym about this very topic, you know, about how the, the fibers of the chest run from insertion to insertion. They run across your chest. You need to follow that path. When you're gonna dip those elbows in and try to follow that, that's not in line. You're incorporating other things. You're, you're bringing in the front delts, you're bringing in this, you're bringing in that, you're putting stress on the rotator cuff. You're doing all kinds of other stuff besides pulling through with the chest. You could be as stable as possible, locked into your machine, feet on the ground, you know, set movement arm. But when you tuck like that, or you're working against the mechanics of your body, you're unstable and you're at a physiological level. These different muscle groups are competing to apply force and it's just a, an ideal situation for something to go wrong. Keep that in mind, guys. Elbows up, elbows out, move alongside, move with the fibers of the chest, and that's gonna serve you best. It's gonna be heavy, dog. I'm gonna do something real heavy. Lord Jesus, protect my body, that's all I can say. so much safer. I can even get in that really stretched position. Put those elbows. Oh. And it's not putting my bicep in a bind. It's not putting that old chest injury in a bind. It's just straight through the pecs.
No need to drop set that. We're gonna do three movements for chest today. So we'll have the additional set of volume. I don't need to overcompensate there. But we definitely went over the rep range. It wasn't near as heavy as I thought it was gonna be. Like I talked about before the set, I wasn't competing against that space. There was only my chest and it was constant throughout. I definitely felt the fatigue toward the end. Some things started to show themselves, but as long as I focused on keeping that elbow path in line with that chest, everything went very well. So now Bailey's gonna hit his set. I'm gonna coach him through it live for you. So now you can role play as if I'm there with you and you train. There you go. That's it. Saw that correction? You corrected that. You got those elbows back up. Look at that chest. Look at it engage. See it separated from the front delta. Stretch. Pull. Exactly, and that's when I shut it down too. When the fatigue starts stacking up on something like that with deep stretches, you know, just go to the failure that is uh, your own and move on. So we're gonna move on after that. We're gonna do a little bit more of a standard chest fly and then we'll hit our dip machine. All right, here we are. Chest movement number two. I really like this uh, Magnum Fitness Systems chest fly. I was telling Bailey, and I've talked about it in the other videos where I've used it. This machine has a slight movement arc upward and it feels really good. So with our nitrous, our Nautilus Nitro pull, our Nautilus Nitro chest fly is at the downward angle. Now we're gonna work the mid to slightly upper. That'll cover the rest of the bases there. And then we'll finish off with a press. I'm going to attempt to do a lifetime PR on this machine with weight. And that will be with 252 pounds. I think 220 is what I did previous as a warm up, And it was, it felt light and easy. So Lord Jesus, protect my body. It's just starting to feel a little unsafe there toward the end. Plus a little bit on the insertion on the right pec, which is catching slack from the other side, which has been torn in the past. And a little bit of the bicep troubles from a previous injury there, but plenty stimulus. I mean, as far as I can recall, that's the heaviest I've ever went on this machine. And I got 10 great reps, perfectly controlled, uh, very deep in the stretch. So that's a, that's a big win for me. Oh yeah, 
after a little bit of trial and error here, we had to settle on the classic because this Gravitron 2000 AT Stairmaster Sports Medical Product LP is the, the best dip machine we're gonna get in here. The Arsenal machine has welded on handles and upon closer observation, they are not even at all. So sitting in the machine and trying to press, you always feel cockeyed. You always are twisted. And I'm looking in the mirror and I'm seeing myself twisted. So then I try, okay, well, I gotta adjust my body. You know, I'm just way out of whack. I only made it worse. So that was an impossibility. Arsenal, strength equipment. Why do you have welders welding on three foot, four foot long handles? You should have a machine doing that, you know, to make it precise. It's not precise at all. Either that or the absolute gorillas in here, not me, have loaded this thing down with so much weight that they bent the bars, but it just looks like it was put on wrong. You can see one is about three inches out further than the other. Absolutely horrible design. And then to build a dip machine that's plate loaded and not have a belt on it, two, uh, two strikes against you, Arsenal. What the fuck? That was stupid. Next was the Omega Fitness Solutions dip machine. I hated it. So yeah, they went out of business for a good reason. But one interesting thing here, on the Gravitron AT, it has a suggested workout and it says the suggested workout would be bar dips, one set of 10 reps, wide grip pull-ups, one set of 10 reps, bar dips, one set of 10 reps, military grip pull-ups, one set of 10 reps, bar dips, one set of 10 reps, parallel grip pull-ups, one set of 10 reps. So you got a list of different movements and the suggestion for all of them is one set. Now, if somebody came up to me and told me that they were making exercise equipment and they thought you only needed one set, I would be inclined to think that they might have decent workout equipment, right? Because they can think clearly enough to understand that one set is all you need to grow. And it just so happens to turn and turns out that uh, the best one in the house. So go figure. Well, this is an assisted dip. We're already pretty damn fatigued. So you want to come to this thing when you are fatigued so you can utilize that little pad and get yourself some extra stability. And I'm going to let this fall all in my chest and I'm going to be done. Another all-time high, I believe. I remember using this machine, having 50 pounds off at the end of a workout. I used 30 pounds off and way exceeded the rep range. So that's it for chest and shoulders. I'm gonna debate for a little bit whether I wanna do a set of biceps and triceps or not. And then we're gonna go eat sushi. Yeah. All right, we got the last one up. We're gonna hit a set of biceps, some extra volume overall for the, uh, the frequency at which we train them now. By adding the extra training day in, that being a specific arm day, and reducing back and arms to just a back day. With four days and two days rest in between each, our frequency has gone uh, lower before we repeat another muscle group. So I've go, uh, go ahead and add in a little bit of supplementary work at the furthest point between the two workouts. So today we're gonna do the Nautilus, the Gen 2 Nautilus bicep curl machine. Uh, if you've seen Mr. Dorian Yates use, he used the Gen 1 with old Mike. Um, it's a great machine, I used it before, love it. I like, uh, these days I like training the biceps from different positions in relation to the shoulder. So here, here, here. All are good. I wanted to train this one this way today. So that's what I'm gonna do. Stop yapping so I can start eating.
That was chest and shoulder day. Another amazing workout as far as progression goes, you know, used weights that I haven't touched before. They all moved so extremely well. Everything felt great today. It was a good piece together workout. I'm gonna strongly consider keeping these movements in when I train in the Cadiana muscle and progress on those. I'm not sure how many weeks out we are at this point. I think we're at something like 11 or 10. I noticed my physique isn't as dry and hard as it was when I started the prep. Understandably so. I mean, the amount of food I'm eating is about double that I was before. I have a layer of water on me, which I don't like. You know, it's harder for me to look at myself and feel like I'm behind, but you gotta realize that uh, using things like generic growth hormones, they hold water on you. It's that little spot on my belly was. A little irritated shot, but so yeah, I'm holding a little bit more water on my physique. I'm eating so much more food. I had, you know, these week periods we talked about last workout where everything was fucked up. Whether it was that stomach bug situation from the rotten milk or the hips and legs being destroyed from being trapped in a cab or my neck from twisting all day. Not everything's 100% ideal, but like I was telling Bailey, I feel like I'm getting smaller and that's just because I'm not as lean, but the weights I'm moving and the way I'm moving things is, it's impossible. It's impossible that I'm getting smaller. You know, it's just not, it's, that's not what's happening. We're definitely uh, gonna grow into the show as Phil's plan moving forward. He's very excited with the progress I'm making. He likes what he sees, which keeps me in a good headspace most of the time. So I'm just here to execute the plan. And as a coach myself, I understand exactly what we're doing. We're feeding me a lot of food so that we can create a high baseline to pull from when we want to get really fucking peeled. Things that are exciting is that my legs are still hard. The lines of my quads are deeper than when I competed at the South Central, and I'm at a bit higher body fat percentage. My abdominals, when I pose, are thicker and more separated as well. The hams and the legs from the side are harder, and they look better in the side poses. So we've even made improvements. I'm just critical of not seeing my shoulders and chest at 5% body fat on 300 milligrams of trend. Because that's a different look, guys. And you're not going to have that unless you're there. So I got to be realistic with my progress and just, you know, stick to the plan and do the prep like I'm supposed to. And I think all things are going to turn out good. You know, we're, we're improved from the last win and the starting point of this prep being really lean. I'm going to end up with my best look ever for my first time on the national stage. So guys, give this workout a try. Keep these things in mind. Hope you learned something today. Exercise selection wise, equipment versus like how the handles are set up, where you're pulling from, how you should align your body when trying to work certain muscle groups what makes good equipment, what makes bad equipment. But I hope you learned one thing overall is that you should train to failure and you only need one set per movement and you don't need many movements to grow. I'm Primark Billy. This is the path of the Primark and I'll see you boys on leg day. Mm -hmm.